Welcome back to Band Aid with Doc Rock. I am Doc Rock, your rockologist. We are in the recovery room. Yeah. All right. Love this part of the show. So many great artists that I get a chance to meet, and boy, here is one of the good ones. This is J.D. Iker of J.D. Iker and the Good Nights. Welcome back to Cleveland, man. How nice. are you tonight? Doing great. How are you doing? Good. good. You looking yeah. good? You looking good? You looking about a little bit of rest in. Now let some CDs and a few things are behind you. Yeah, yeah, a little bit uh, less on the table right it, now. It is good. great stuff. Well, I don't know how many of you had the chance to catch J.D. Iker and the Good Nights. I will tell you that they came to town to headline the, of course, the Band-Aid Bash we did last fall at the Beachland Ballroom, and they took the Beachland Ballroom right down. So they just, yeah, it was Thanks. a great, great show. That was fun. I was, was so fun. impressed with you. It was just, nice. it's an honor to have you back here. So how, here. how are the good nights doing? They're doing great. They're doing great. They're all everybody's, together? Everybody's uh, been good? Everybody's been good, yeah. Okay. Everybody's, uh, everybody's uh, sticking with it. So Are they so good? So good. good. Yeah. Well, they're being good nights, you know, so that, that's important. I mean, yeah. what, what great guys with diverse backgrounds, too, when, you know, all get together and uh, put you out there as the front man. It is really dynamic. You know what? What, what's the chemistry? What makes J.D. Iker and the Good Nights just jive so well? I'll use an old term, jive. Yeah, you know? <laughs> we, got, well, we got a, a good mix of, uh, of personality. I think uh, um, we got one, one guy, our keyboardist, comes from a rock band. So, okay. uh, so that, we've got that element. We've got um, jazz drummer gone rock. So he, he adds a little bit of, uh, I guess you'd say, uh, complexity and maybe a little uh, sophistication, if you will, to, to the mix. And then we've got a uh, um, Jim, who's who's uh, an older guy, who's just a great funk bass player. So you kind of yeah. throw it all together, and and, uh, and it makes for a fun sound. I, mm -hmm. I like uh, I like. Yeah, there's a special stuff. chemistry there that's that's so good. Yeah, so we kind of kind of understand each other up there, which is nice. Sure, sure. Well, you know, I've got to ask you though, as you know, we've been at this a little while now, J.D. Aker, and you know, you're, you're finding with the band some of the personal influences are beginning to change, you know, as the band comes from such diversity and as the band's aging, are they, you know, they're listening to some different music and being inspired by some different things now? Yeah, it's, it's interesting how we influence each other. I think, like, uh, you know, um, Jim has, uh, has some, some influences. He's, he's, he comes from a different era, and so we've kind of been drawn into some of that. Or, uh, you know, we'll, get, we'll go for a funkier sound sometimes just because he loves, you know, he loves old Motown and that uh -huh. kind of thing. And then... Uh, um, Dan is like uh, more of a rock guy. He loves uh, Counting Crows and, sure. and some of the, the pop rock from, from back uh, you know, 10, 15 years ago. So, so we kind of throw those at each other. It works out well. I like it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. I, think, I think it's great. The, uh, well, I, you know, I also got to tell you, too, the... Um, because I want to talk about this, the Kickstarter experience. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of time and chance. We saw you on the front end of that, and yeah. you went through that whole experience mm -hmm. and all, and uh, yeah. and uh, finally got out a a brand new CD, which we we do need to hold up and to uh, to show. But this brand new CD is called Shifting, yeah. and Shifting by J.D. Ecker and the Good Nights. Can we get a little close up of this, please? I'd like to. This is some really neat cover art. Okay, you know, the, the cover art on this is so cool. And then, of course, uh, the jacket opens up beautifully, and it's just got a wonderful tribute uh, inside the jacket along the way. You know, a lot that is so personal. And, of course, on the back are some of the other good nights. J.D. Iker and the good nights are all there in their glory, okay? It's a very relaxing picture after going through the whole CD <laughs> process. So, really great packaging and product. Congratulations on this. Thanks. I know it's very well, successful and thank you. deservingly so. We heard a couple of songs mm -hmm. uh, just before you came into the recovery room. What were the two songs? Do you remember? Sure. Uh, I think the, the first one that came on was called Fine Line. Okay. And the second one was The Beauty of It All. Okay. So, um, the Fine Line? Two, two uh -huh. the, um, okay. Okay. the front runners on that album. Two uh -huh. we've, been, we've been pushing a little bit more than the other Oh, ones. sure. No, it's great yeah. stuff. And the. Uh, um, I have to I have to comment too about the uh, the what's the big story I was reading about you in Crane's Cleveland business. Yeah, yeah. Now bands, this, cool. this is really neat because because JD Iker was uh, was getting started with Kickstarter. He actually did the show to talk about you know what Kickstarter was all about. If you go back into our archives, you'll catch that. Find out a little, little detail about Kickstarter. Who who has grown a lot you know since those five yeah. months ago. Okay, but but in that experience, what he did was actually JD Iker sent you know, their media people sent a press release to Crane's Cleveland Business, which is a pure business uh, weekly newspaper. And Crane's picked up the story about Kickstarter and used this whole profile of J.D. Iker and the Good Nights as an example of using Kickstarter. And you got press that <laughs> nobody awesome. gets. It, uh, it was great. Yeah, it really was. And, it, and that's really fantastic press. And that's what, that's what shows you with bands, you know, with, with it's not about your CD or your project. It's how it relates to something that, you know, would be in business in this case. Mm 
but uh, but again, feeding the media, and this, in this case, it worked out beautifully for yeah. for you. So congratulations. Tell us about Kickstarter. So so you got started with Kickstarter. Sure. Okay. The dollars started flowing in, or right? Yeah, I think I believe when we when we uh, when I was here, uh, we had been a couple weeks into it. So right. um, it kind of it seemed it came in quick in the beginning, and then we had like a really long kind of drag time almost for things mm -hmm. like that. Uh -oh. And then at the end, uh, things picked up again, and we actually ended up. Uh, I think we hit 115 percent of our goals. So we ended up uh, passing by, but it, it was in a week's period of time where it was. If there was a week, a week out, it was looking kind of things were looking kind of tough, and then in that last week, everything kind of went. We kind of learned that it seems like uh, in these situations, um, you know, you have to have that momentum going, mm -hmm. um, and people will jump on if if it seems like you know everyone's taking an interest. You kind of you build that buzzer. It's a, it's just like a buzzing band. You kind of build that buzz around it, mm -hmm. and people get people get interested in it. It, it worked. It was cool. Everyone kind of got into the. So really, so really, you know, it's kind of like if you get started with it, don't don't sweat it if it has a dry spell. You know, mm -hmm. stay with it, keep the word going. Yeah. But you know, it also maybe is simply about you know people holding out to see who's first in. Yeah, you know, who's, yeah. No. Who's going to be first? <laughs> I think there's a little bit of that. Like, well, is this worth getting involved with? Right. Is this worth my time and stuff? And um, it was it was nice that <laughs> most people so, thought it was. was so so was you nice so, so so you made the budget, mm -hmm. the goal. If, if I may ask, what was that goal? Financial goal. Um, the goal was seventy eight hundred dollars. Seventy eight hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so ended up, I think like nine thousand and twenty or something. Right. See, see bands. I mean, this is the thing that bands need to know about. So with Kickstarter, you know, there it there it does work. It, okay? Yeah, it really does. Yeah. And JD doesn't have something to do with the fact that you know uh, maybe the reputation of the band, the good reputation, and the legitimacy of the project. I mean, because they, they know the JD Iker and the Good Knights have been around for a little while. Mm -hmm. You 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 had one wonderful prior uh, album that was a good success, and now you know they they anybody knows by helping you with this investment that you're here for the long haul. I mean, is there yeah, a I think so. level in there? Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I, I really am a, a career musician. I mean, this is what I do for a living. So I think that people know that and they've kind of gotten comfortable with the idea that, you know, they're not going to throw money at this project and it's just going to fizzle. We really want to like, we're going to tour by this album and stuff. Sure. So, so it's, it's uh, you know, we're, we're sticking with it for better or worse. So, now, now it's, of course, when you, with the Kickstarter program, it had, it had the fact that it was for a CD and, you know, and for mm -hmm. all that stuff. I don't believe the title of the CD was listed in the Kickstarter thing. It wasn't. We weren't. We weren't married to it yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard when you're telling people a donut to band that the name of the album is going to be shifting, right? <laughs> so yeah, it's really kind of shifty. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. We uh, smart move. Yeah, we, yeah, we hadn't we hadn't married to uh, to any name. Um, in fact, we we had to be kind of careful. We didn't even know for sure how many songs. We just knew a ballpark, so we uh, so what I, we were cutting acoustic versions of songs and sharing them and stuff. Okay. And we couldn't really. Um, we just didn't know how the studio's experience was going to go, so we weren't, we couldn't quite commit to any definites. The, um, uh, in the, well, sure, and so it was all worth and done. You went out to, uh, gosh, what was it? Sucker Punch Recording. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> there's another one you don't post on Kickstarter. Yeah, okay? and you know, you're also, we, we, you know, we, we, none of the shady things uh, came out. <laughs> for, and I swear to God, we used every cent for the right cause, but uh, <laughs> for the purpose. But yeah, the, the name Sucker Bunch was a little bit. Uh, a little frightening, but I can I can tell you that uh, that it was a, a really great really great experience. Uh, producer Paul Barber is an awesome guy and a great great person. And uh, Sucker Punch Recording Studio is a great a great little studio. It's located it's where? It's in uh, uh, Bethesda, Maryland. Bethesda, Maryland. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, how away, you, I was say, how would you come across something like that? Um, just kind of networking and uh, through the producer, not through the oh, the, I see. the okay. studio. So okay. Okay. Kind of no, it's superior something. I mean, I think you've made certainly the right choice. Thanks. And the no, graphics are great. May I ask who did the graphics? Graphics. Sure. Um, so the the design is done by Dan Prokop Creative. Oh, okay. And uh, he's actually Great. our keyboardist. So uh -huh. he's uh, you know very close to the project. And the um, the sketch is uh, the hand hand drawn stuff is by uh, Shannon Fink, who oh, is really? um, kind of a friend of a friend from Pittsburgh. It's great to have a talented, talented graphic artist in the band. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, having that is a, is a nice asset. He's, uh -huh. great. He's great at what he does. Well, the contents are great. Like I said, the Tuna Fine line is one of my personal favorites. I've always enjoyed that one. So, you know, I'm just curious, you know, talk about shifting. J.D. Iker at age, what, 24 now. Do you feel yourself shifting? I, yeah, I mean, I, we named it that. <laughs> we, we, uh, we named it that definitely intentionally. It was uh, um, we have some a couple new members since the first record, so um, there was that change, and a lot of the songs, um, even within musically and lyrically, we kind of focused on 
um, change in, in different contexts and whatnot. So um, some of the songs have some drastic. There's a song that um, has like a reggae section that shows up in the middle of nowhere and stuff. So um, everything about the record is kind of focused on change. The first songs are pop songs, okay. and as you go toward the end, um, the last song is an indie song. So oh, it kind of okay. shifts from pop to, to more of like an indie. Um, more of a have you found have you found with your own your own personal writing style? Mm -hmm. do you, are you are you shifting? Are you writing different than so. you did maybe three years ago? Yeah, three three years ago or so, I think I uh, I was uh, in a much different place. Now I, I tend to, I, I try to write a little bit more of a tighter song. Now I try to um, I'm really focused more on melodies than um, I used to be like all about the poetry in mm -hmm. the music and, and I really now I've, I've really I'm almost obsessed with a nice melody. So I've kind of okay. shifted and now I'm really into how do I fit good melodies into form and stuff, so it's kind of changed yeah. my, my approach a little and, bit. And I watched some of the live video performances of the band, the, uh, you know, the band is so much more comfortable. The Good Nights are, you know, having fun on stage. Yeah, yeah we we'll have a good time. We we'll have a great time. Oh, it is absolutely great. But, but I do have to tell you, though, um, <clears throat> I wouldn't be the doctor if I didn't tell you this. You know, I, I watched the video of you doing the cover Superstition. I don't know. <laughs> it's awfully cracker. You think, you think <laughs> well, now, um, the bass is the fuck and everything. Mm -hmm. no, I looked at that. Now, people are going to dance to Superstition no matter what. Yeah, that's song. true. Yeah, we got that. But well, see, all covers are with them. Yeah. Well, what's your You know, good well, time. You know, I'm never going to be Stevie. <laughs> I, I never, you know, no claims of being Stevie. Well, it's a hard song to do the same <laughs> page for that song, but I was, and that was one I would not have expected you to do. Yeah, I heard yeah, you do some great Beatles, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah um, we love the Beatles. So. Oh, my gosh, great Beatles. The uh, how is how how is this record shifting uh, the new one? Mm -hmm. How is it uh, how is it much better than the first album? The first album was what the shape of things. Shape of things, yeah. You know, what, going through the recording experience now twice. Mm -hmm. What did you learn on on album number two that yeah. enhanced it over album number one? Um, I think I think a lot of it was who you work with.